encourage you to please pick one up. You can follow along with our proceedings tonight. There will be multiple opportunities for public comment, both with respect to items that are on our agenda tonight, as well as a section under agenda item number 12 that is reserved for public comments of a general nature. It is the opportunity for members of the audience to ask questions or make comments of general nature on items that are not on our agenda tonight. It is our proud tradition to begin our meetings by reciting the Pledge of Allegiance. So at this point, I would invite everyone to please rise and join us in reciting the Pledge. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. I'd like to ask our fine village clerk, April Holden, to please call the roll. Commissioner Jose? Here. Commissioner Olson? Here. Commissioner Rankin? Here. Commissioner Barnett? Here. Commissioner Neustadt? Here. Commissioner Durkin? Here. Mayor Tully? Here. Thank you very much. That brings us to item three, which pertains to minutes of council meetings. We have one set of minutes to review tonight. Those are our minutes from our regular council meeting on April 14th, 2015. Any members of the council have any questions, comments, changes, or corrections to those minutes? Seeing none, by motion to approve. So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Those minutes are adopted. That brings us to item four, proclamations. I have a couple of proclamations to read tonight. First, with respect to our day, whereas the last Friday in April has been designated as Arbor Day to encourage the planting of trees and the protection from insects and diseases that destroy their beauty and usefulness. And whereas trees add much to our community by providing beauty, helping reduce heating and cooling bill, in comma, increasing property values, enhancing the economic vitality of business areas, and improving the quality of life for years to come. And whereas the Village of Downers Grove has received national recognition for the 31st year for its tree care program by being named, once again, a Tree City USA. Now therefore, I am Martin T. Tully, Mayor of the Village of Downers Grove, and hereby proclaim Friday, April 24th, 2015, to be Arbor Day here in the Village of Downers Grove, and urge all residents to care for their trees. Second proclamation has to do with um, Founders Day. And uh, we have some special guests here tonight to receive this proclamation. Whereas the first settler in Downers Grove was Pierce Downer, who arrived in 1832. And whereas Pierce Downer set eyes on a portion of the expansive Illinois prairie with an impressive oak tree grove that would become the village of Downers Grove. And whereas that same year the Black Hawk War ended and more settlers came. And whereas in 1845, the first store and first schoolhouse opened in Downers Grove. And whereas early settlers such as Mr. Downer, Dexter Stanley, Israel Blodgett, and Horace Dodge had the grit and determination to carve out a livelihood and establish a community. And whereas the spirit of this early community was epitomized by cooperation amongst neighbors and hospitality towards newcomers and travelers alike. And whereas this caring and hospitable nature was extended to fleeing slaves by villagers whose homes were stations on the famed Underground Railroad. And whereas in 1860, a group from Downers Grove known as the Plowboys played an integral role in the campaign to elect Abraham Lincoln as president, establishing a rich tradition of political activism. And whereas in 1873, with a population of just over 350, the first village government was formed and Downers Grove was incorporated. Now, therefore, I, Martin T. Tully, mayor of the village of Downers Grove, do hereby proclaim Saturday, May 2nd, and Sunday, May 3rd, as Downers Grove Founders Day here in the village, and call upon all citizens to join me in commemorating the founding of our village. And to receive this proclamation, and perhaps share a few words with us, we have two special guests. Number one, we have uh, Tom Casey, who's the president of the Downers Grove Historical Society, and none other, ladies and gentlemen, than Pierce Downer himself. <laughs> Uh, thank you, Mayor. Thank you, uh, Village Council, for. Come on, if you're talking about okay. Oh, that's right. I'm sorry. 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 i and the Bears will also open their season with the Green Bay 
right, thank you. 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 Thank so well, on behalf of the uh, Historical Society, I want to say thank you to everyone for honoring uh, the fact that we're reviving Founders Day. Uh, we started about three years ago, started out very small, and it's grown every year. Uh, this year, we're partnering with several different groups, and if I could just mention those quickly. Uh, the event is May 2nd and 3rd. On Saturday, May 2nd, we've got a partnership uh, with the Park District for the Country in the Park, which is at the museum. Um, <clears throat> the Windy City, Windy City Walkers will be having a 5K and 10K self-guided walking tour throughout the uh, downtown Downers Grove area. Um, we've also got at 1022, we invite all of you to join us for the Downers Grove uh, bike ride, which is sponsored by the Downers Grove Bike Club. We've got Bill Chalver here. Um, that is an eight mile ride throughout various uh, parts of Downers Grove and we have it mapped out. So we've got 10 or 11 points, historical points of significance that people can stop and look at. You've got a little brochure that they can read about the significance of that, that spot within the village. Um, <clears throat> also partnering with us is the uh, Downers Grove, um, or, I'm sorry, the Pierce Downer Heritage Alliance. They're sponsoring a wildflower walk in Lyman Woods. Um, on Sunday, we're honoring Sam Curtis as the founder of the year for Founders Day this year. And uh, lastly, we're honoring John Breen as the historian of the year. So with that, I'd like to turn it over to Pierce Downer and have him speak a few words. Thank you, Tom. Well, it's a pleasure for me to be here tonight, and I especially thank the council for the recognition of, of this proclamation. And I'm especially pleased to see that my old friend Sam Curtis is being honored. I think that's very appropriate, because even though this village is named for me, uh, only because I was the first one to settle here. But there are, like Sam Curtis, many other fine men and women who worked hard during the early years and late years to make this village prosper. And I, I once again, I thank you for this honor. And good evening. Good evening. Thank you very much. And we really appreciate all that you do to continue the rich heritage of our community on for future generations. And I just feel like we need to applaud it. <laughs> so thank you. So we did. All right, that brings us to item five on our agenda. Council member reports. This is an opportunity for members of the Village Council to uh, report out to the audience and those watching at home any items of interest to the community or goings on. We'll start with uh, Commissioner Jose tonight. Can't top that, Mayor. No report. <laughs> Commissioner Rankin. No report. Thank you. Thank you, Commissioner. Commissioner Newstead. No report. Commissioner Olson. No report. Commissioner Barnett. No report, Mayor. I'm going to say the same thing. No report for me. I'll, uh, I'll actually have something later on in the mayor's report. That brings us to item six, our consent agenda. We have a few items on our consent agenda. Is there a motion to approve the consent agenda as presented? So moved. Second. Any questions or comments from members of the audience with respect to the items on tonight's consent agenda? Questions or comments from members of the Village Council? Hearing none, may I have a roll call, please? Commissioner Neustadt? Aye. Commissioner... Olson? Aye. Commissioner Jose? Aye. Commissioner Rankin? Aye. Commissioner Barnett? Aye. Mayor Tully? Aye. Consent agenda passes unanimously. <coughs> it brings us to item seven, our active agenda. We have one item on our active agenda tonight. We have a motion to adopt an ordinance adopting the State of Illinois Plumbing Code and amendments thereto. So moved. Second. Any questions or comments from the audience? Questions or comments from the Village Council? I'll just add that related to this item, there has been some recent uh, discussion uh, amongst members of the Illinois Municipal League, League about whether there can be some changes made at the local level regarding materials used in the plumbing code. And as that develops a little bit further, I'll, I'll send it around. It looks like it's only very nascent in, in nature. So once I see more of what, what it's all about, I'll be happy to share it with everybody, just as sort of a related update. Roll call, please. Commissioner Newstead? Aye. Commissioner Olson? Aye. Commissioner Jose? Aye. Commissioner Rankin? Aye. Commissioner Barnett? Aye. Mayor Tully? Aye. The matter passed unanimously and brings us to item eight, which is our first reading or our workshop agenda. This is an opportunity to discuss items for presentation consideration only. No action is taken at this time. As is traditional, I uh, usually ask the village manager or his designee to present the item for consideration by all those in attendance. Mr. Fieldman, good evening. 
Good evening, Mayor Tully. Thank you very much. Only one item on tonight's first reading agenda. It's an ordinance regarding a special use at 4215 Bernard. And here to present this item is our planning manager, Stan Popovich. Good evening, Mr. Popovich. Good evening, Mayor. Good evening, Council Members. As uh, Mr. Fieldman noted, it's a special use for an extended family accessory housing unit at 4215 Bernard Road. Uh, Bernard Road, the property is uh, north and west of Main Street and Ogden Avenue on Bernard Road, uh, immediately south of Dorhoffer Park. This is a little blow-up area there of showing where the uh, house is located at 4215 Bernard. Extended family uh, accessory housing is primarily an in-law suite with uh, kitchen facilities. Uh, it is a secondary dwelling unit, so that's why it requires a special use because this is in a single-family residential zoning district. The existing conditions, this is the existing outline of the house. Uh, the larger structure, more on to the left, is the main uh, house. There's an attached garage, which is shown here shaded, and then a detached garage is outlined in uh, black just to the right of the existing home. What the uh, petitioners uh, proposing to do is to convert the, uh, the f existing attached garage into the extended family accessory housing unit, uh, and then use the uh, detached garage as a detached garage, and then use the rest of the house as it currently is. It's currently under renovation. Uh, as we speak and they have a permit for the renovations that are going on right now but the permit does not include the conversion of this uh, the conversion of the garage to the uh, extended family accessory housing unit extended family accessory housing is permit is a, an allowable special use in a residential zoning district such as this it's uh, generally for residents more than 62 years of age um, so the floor plan that's proposed for the uh, conversion from the garage to the extended family uh, unit includes a kitchen down shown here, a bedroom and a separate bathroom. The ordinance requires that we receive a uh, decon deconversion plan. So uh, when the resident no longer lives there, then it would be converted into usable space and converted back to a single family residence. So this is the conversion plan that would convert the kitchen into a wet bar area and use this as a rec room. Uh, so that would be the conversion plan and that they would have to submit to us and, and make those changes if the resident were to move out. The uh, comp comprehensive plan calls for a variety of housing units and types throughout the village. Uh, and then we believe as, that the extended family accessory housing unit uh, would meet that uh, request for variety and different types of types of housing units. Uh, extended family accessory housing allows seniors to age in place here in the village in an affordable uh, manner and allows the petitioner uh, to care for an elder elderly parent uh, as they age there as well. Uh, the appearance of the building itself will remain as a single family home so will be no outwardly changes to the single family nature of the neighborhood itself uh, the proposal meets the standards as defined in the zoning ordinance under section 6.010.f those are the uh, standards for special use approval if there's any questions that that you have at this time i'd be happy to answer those for you thank you for the presentation are there any questions from members of the audience Anything further from the petitioner? <laughs> Questions from the council? Commissioner Burnett. Uh, thanks, Mayor. Um, you may recall some of my colleagues when we were going through the zoning ordinance last year, this was an issue that was um, important to me that these be somehow allowed within our ordinance because uh, I think they are a pretty critical thing uh, for our population and, and the population in general as it ages. Just a question, though, about this. The, like a little more clarification it, it appears as though the applicant owner lives in Villa Park um, and so I'm just wanting to, to understand that the my understanding of the intention of the ordinance is exactly as you described it Stan that we're talking about typically senior not necessarily senior but certainly extended family and mm -hmm. so I'm trying to understand the relationship between the owners and applicants versus the existing residents of the house versus who might be in the extended dwelling area. So the, there are no residents in the house right now. The petitioners purchased the property. Uh, I don't, it was in disrepair. So he came in with a building permit to repair the home and then construct the extended family accessory housing unit for his mother. So the petitioner will end up living in the primary portion? Correct. Okay and then his mom would live in the accessory unit and that's the only way we would uh, permit the extended family is that the, the family unit has to live there. You can't, yeah, you right. can't rent it out to a uh, uh, non-family member in the front and, and have mom live in the back or dad live in the back. Great, that's, that's the clarification I was looking for. I, I'm just glad our, our ordinance allows for this kind of a thing. I think it'll be mm -hmm. more common and more helpful as we go forward. Thanks. You're welcome. Thank you, Commissioner. Other questions from the council? 
Just one quick question I had is uh, one of the conditions for the special use that uh, we're all, is being recommended pursuant to our ordinance is that the accessory unit shall be converted to be a part of the existing uh, single family dwelling unit within 120 days of the lapse of the special use approval. Uh, is it contemplated that there's a terminus date on this? The terminus date is when the... Or did that, I, and if I missed that, I apologize. There's no anticipated terminus date. The terminus date is when uh, the extended family resident either moves out and no longer occupies the space and then a building permit will be required to come in or if the petitioner were to move and then at that point the extended family accessory housing unit unless somebody were to purchase it with the same consideration like if they were going to move mom in as well and they were going to move in then they could continue that, that special use but if the current petitioner were to move out the special use would become null and void and that and that explains the inspection and the affidavit requirements so we can be sure of its continued use under the circumstances that are being proposed correct on an annual basis at the first of the year we send out notices to the we currently have three extended family accessory housing units in the village and we send notices out to them asking for an affidavit uh, noting that nothing has changed in their living situations okay and then if it does change then the, the special use would potentially lapse unless as you mentioned there was an extraordinary circumstance correct um, and in which case it would have to be converted back correct and we had we had a situation a few years ago let's say three or four years ago where uh, an extended family resident passed away so we worked with the property owner to convert their extended family unit into another family room thank you appreciate Welcome. the clarification any other questions that okay. is our first reading tonight mayor thank you thank you <coughs> that brings us to the end of the first reading as you just said on to item nine the mayor's report uh, is I mentioned earlier there's a couple things I want to mention real quickly uh, to update the community as well as my colleagues. Um, uh, and as, as all of you know, uh, I serve as the uh, uh, District uh, 3 representative to the DuPage County Stormwater Management Committee. Uh, at its meeting this morning, there were a number of items of business, but the one I thought might be of interest, since I've reported on it before, is uh, the status of the county's proposed floodplain maps, which have been in progress for some period of time and have been out for, for public comment. Uh, I know we commented as well as other municipalities. Uh, the current status is that they're still ongoing. Uh, I'll just give you the exact update. The county's proposed floodplain maps are still under FEMA review at this point in time. Uh, the county remains hopeful that preliminary maps will be issued sometime this spring and then an open house scheduled so that anyone could, could go and view them. The uh, Illinois State Water Surveys continues to address questions from FEMA regarding the mapping with assistance from DuPage County staff as necessary. And the Illinois State Water Survey should be sending to the county a preview of the flood insurance study report so that county staff can review it. So that's the, that's the current state of that. And once we know more, I will be happy to share it with everyone. Can I ask a question? Sure. <clears throat> so if somebody's um, status is changing on their home, are they being notified of that town hall meeting so that they would know that they are either now in a floodplain or? Specifically by the county, I will yeah. find out. I know that there have been a number of public notices. I don't know off the top of my head what communication methods the county has used, uh, but I know the original maps that were developed by the county prior to submitting them to FEMA for review were, I think for a year, that was probably what, a year, more, um, were out there for public comment and, and, and notification. What I don't know is what level of communication the county utilized to. Right, I mean, like if it was hosted in the newspaper. I'll have to check and let you know, Commissioner. I don't recall that off the top of my head, but I can find out. The other item I want to mention very quickly is that uh, the wetland maps that the county produces have been updated, and the uh, committee today approved posting of the draft wetland maps uh, as of today. They should be available as soon as they can get them up. Uh, for a 30-day review period and then there will be informational meetings held with stakeholders in the month of june so to the extent that uh, there is interest by municipalities businesses or residents in the wetland maps that the county is updating uh, that information will be available for review and, and comment pretty soon that's all i had that brings us to item 10 of the manager's report Mr. Chairman. we do have a report tonight we have a first quarter of 2015 report to be provided by our finance director judy butney Good evening, Ms. Butney. Good evening, Mayor and Council. <clears throat> As Dave said, we've got the first quarter report. 
and first quarter revenues, the budget is 44.82 million, and we expected to see 8.92 million in the first quarter, and actually saw 9.05 million for a favorable variance of 130,000. This variance was due uh, mainly to two factors. Building revenue permits were over budget, and this is due mainly to the large, although we have a lot of permit activity, it was mainly due to the large commercial projects in the amount of 200000 And if you recall, Art Van and the Advocate Health Care New Bed Tower. This favorable variance was offset in part by telecommunications revenue being under budget by 50000 <clears throat> This trend is people that continue to move away from landlines and also providers are beginning to bundle services. And in the bundling, they're offering discounts. And so that portion, which is taxable, is decreasing. All other revenues in the general fund are at or near budget. Regarding expenses, uh, again, the budget 44.82 million. The revenues and expenses, as you recall, were uh, balanced. We expected to see 8.9 million in the first quarter. Expenses came in at 8.7 for a favorable variance of 200,000. And this is uh, 200,000 is attributed to the cost containment measures that have been implemented in anticipation of the reduced state revenues. I'd be happy to answer any questions. Thank you. We always like receiving good news. Any questions from members of the council? Any questions from the audience? Thank you. Thank you. That ends our report tonight, Mayor. Thank you very much. Let's bring us to item 11, uh, Village Attorney's Report. Ms. Petrarca. Thank you. We are only one item to present this evening. It is an ordinance authorizing a special use to permit an extended family accessory housing unit at 4215 Menard Road. Thank you, Mayor. Thank you. That brings us to item 12, which is reserved for public comments of a general nature. If there are questions or comments from members of the audience with respect to items of a general nature, we would invite you to please come down to the podium. Give us your name and we would welcome hearing from you. Good evening, Ms. Butler. Good evening. I'm Connie Butler, 5925 Washington. I'd like to make one observation and then have two questions. The observation with uh, you recognizing Diamonds Grove as a as an arbor town um, speaks to I think the speaks to my feeling about why my concern of an initial uh, plan for Clyde Estates to take away so many trees. That's just an observation of a feeling. And so um, I'm, I'm happy that there's tree preservation going on within Clyde as well as within um, the town. <clears throat> the question I have is, um, the, uh, I live at the 59th Street entrance into Washington, which is a speed area, just as Clyde into um, uh, Maine the Clyde is, and Washington, uh, 61st into Washington is. The round around um, was, a, I think, a good idea. The fact that, that you had the, it involved taking down a mature tree and um, was the reason, a huge reason, for me saying no to that. That still does, still leaves us with a, a uh, speeding problem coming into Clyde from, uh, from 59th. Uh, I can identify several vehicles, so it's a kind of repeated kind of uh, vehicle speeding at, at pretty predictable times. So the question I'm asking is, my understanding is there's going to be at the southern end of the reconstruction of the streets, three stop signs. And I was wondering if it's possible to put a stop sign at Washington and gosh, I don't even know what that's called there. Clyde Circle, 60th, going to Webster Circle, I don't even know. Um, that we have um, Washington with the two side streets. And so that's why I'm wondering, is it possible to put a stop sign there? So that now you have an initial stop sign coming into three houses into Clyde, into an early. And the other question is, um, 
I forgot. <laughs> so if I think of it again, I'll come back up. But otherwise, I guess it wasn't that important. So thanks. Thank you, Ms. Bauer. Other questions or comments of general nature? Good evening. Hi, um, I'm Kathy Hebert, and I just um, have a comment about the supervisor of sidewalks in the town. Um, last June, I fell on a sidewalk um, on Maple, just as you're crossing the tracks. Um, my toe got caught on the sidewalk that was probably about three inches um, you know, too high from the other one, from the other piece of sidewalk. Um, I had numerous cuts um, on my face, on my hands, on my knees. And I went, th that was on a Friday, middle of June. I went to the public works department um, the, on the Monday after and asked to talk to the head of the public works. Well, the receptionist asked me what I wanted and I told her it was about sidewalks and so she said, well, he's in the field. I'll have him call you. So he did call me. He, I told him what happened. He went out there and looked at it and said, oh yeah, I see where it was. I marked it. Um, it'll be fixed by August. So I said, okay. Um, August came, went, I kept looking at it, um, you know, then it was September, October, November, of course, I didn't expect anything to be done then, and nothing was done, and then um, I happened to be on a walk with Becky, and I had just mentioned that money that was, that a private citizen wanted for something else could maybe better be spent on fixing the sidewalks in the town. She asked me about it, she wrote it down, and a um, little while later, after I talked to her, um, they put some asphalt to patch it. And let me back up too, um, I did talk to the uh, commissioner or head of the sidewalks the second time I went to recycle my Christmas lights and asked to talk to him. He came out, told him who I was, and he's like, oh, didn't we fix that? Because I gave it to my engineer or whatever. I said, no, it's not fixed. And he goes, oh, and that was it. So the only person who really got that patched for me was Becky, and I thank you for doing that. But I certainly hope that somebody talks to the sidewalk commissioner and that sidewalk gets fixed because somebody should really go and look at the condition of that whole sidewalk there. And it runs behind Permiseo and Bear um, Plumbing. It's in horrible condition. Um, I don't know who owns the property on the west side of the tracks, but there's garbage there. The trees are, bushes are overgrown. I don't know if that's railroad property. I don't think it's the homeowner that lives right before the, um, the Maple Crossing, but something needs to be done with that because it really is bad. But um, there's also another sidewalk on the corner of Saratoga and Prairie on the southeast corner. There's been a big hole and it's all loose gravel in there. Um, and I walk a lot every day in town. That has been in that repair, disrepair since early fall. And their solution was to put a horse over it. Well, in the winter, the, the homeowners needed to shovel that sidewalk and the horse now is still in their grass. So I, I think that they really need to spend some, some time and some money on fixing the sidewalks. I have one more thing too. Um, there used to be a stop sign um, right behind Fisher Park Banshell and where the Emmett's parking lot is. Um, there's no longer a stop sign and when you're walking the cars just come zipping through that alleyway and I don't know if that's village property or park district property. I don't know whose property it is but um, it would be good if that stop sign was replaced. Thanks. Thank you for pointing those things out uh, Mrs. Hebert. I know that uh, some sidewalk work has already been going on because I've noticed that just in the same area a lot of shaving and grinding to eliminate some of those gaps. Uh, find out about the stop sign by the Banshell. Thank you. Came back to you, Ms. Butler. Hi, I remember, my, remember now my second question. It may be a silly question, but 
It was recommended last time that those of us in Clyde um, to get a, a, an idea of what it would look like to have a depression um, with the streets and the reconstruction, that we view downers something. Downers of what, what, what was the place? Downers that, place, right? I think it was Downers Place. Downers <laughs> Down to the states. Down. And, um, I think the best way to get an understanding of the future ditching and right of way treatment in Clyde Estates is to attend the neighborhood meeting uh, that will be held on Monday, April 27th. Uh, we will have pictures, um, other diagrams, other visuals to help people understand what the uh, plans call for in their neighborhood. Some of them will look a little bit like what's in Downers Grove Estates. Uh, but the Downers Grove Estates ditching system um, is designed to function in uh, a very different way than the Clyde Estates uh, ditch system. So it's not a great example. There's a couple that look the same. There are many in Downers Grove Estates that won't look anything like Clyde Country Estates. So I think the best way to get an understanding is to attend the neighborhood meeting on April 27th. Sure, appreciate the clarification. However, if there happens to be a spot in town that is similar to what uh, the systems will be, and maybe there aren't, but if there were, it might be something to point out to the residents that attend the public meeting. So it's, it's, it's one thing to see a picture, it's another thing to actually uh, see it in 3D. We will have the locations of the pictures. If, if, if there are such good examples. If there are. We don't want to steer people to ones that aren't. So, since it was mentioned last, uh, last time as, as seeing down the Square of Estates, where is down the Square of Estates located? That's my question. It is west of Main Street, south of 63rd, with streets like Norfolk and Adelia. Okay, because um, I was wondering, because I was driving through there, that's behind the convenience store, behind Teddy's, and, um, and some of them look like they're fairly new, and I thought, well, that's probably what you're talking about. And it did look very nice. It was grassy. <laughs> nice. Thank you, Ms. Butler. Other questions or comments of a general nature? Being down at Clyde Estates, um, kind of brought up that we're going to have this public works meeting next Monday, and I would like to request that we have some kind of tape uh, or video of the, of the program that they're going to put on. We've had two meetings over in public works and they were for input from the citizens or the residents, but there was no recording, and a lot of us got up and we just poured our hearts out, but there was no recording and no nothing to prove what we said. And I got to thinking about it. We have cameras that have um, audio recording, and it would be very convenient if somebody could go over to Public Works and take a, a take a recording of this, or maybe get a court reporter in, if they're going to allow us to have input and comments. Um, will we be allowed to have comments and input? I believe so. Okay. And I think it would be a wonderful opportunity for the council to go over there. And it would be even nicer, really nice, if we could have it here in the village hall. It's very comfortable here. Anyway, thank you. Some ways it actually works better over there, uh, and that's traditionally where we hold, where we hold it. But thank you for your comments. It really was not comfortable in there. <laughs> uh, there's Verge Hall, there's the committee room, there's fire station number two, there's public works. They all have their pros and cons. Other questions or comments of a general nature? Good evening. Good evening, Mayor, uh, Commissioners, and staff. I'm Gordon Goodman, and I live at 5834 Middaw. And there were two uh, topics that I'd like to touch on, one very briefly. Um, could we see the, uh, the poster first, please? Uh, uh, spoke yesterday, uh, last week about the uh, walk uh, in Lyman Woods on the 2nd of May. I forgot, uh, maybe I uh, didn't mention that that's also uh, one of the Founders Day uh, <laughs> Uh, activities in Downers Grove, and uh, we're part of that Founders Day activity. I'm encouraging people to look at the website of the Historical Society and uh, make sure that you 
participate in the other events. Uh, this is a poster advertising our component of it uh, on Saturday, and um, we have filled half of the available walking position, so I want to encourage anyone who does want to come uh, to take a chance on the weather. I think it's going to be good, but uh, don't wait until the last minute because uh, there won't be spaces. Um, the next topic I'd like to turn to is the uh, topic of um, the Edwards House. And at the end of uh, the meeting last week, two of the commissioners, Commissioner Barnett and Commissioner Jose, touched on the issue of historic preservation in Downers Grove. Uh, Commissioner Barnett said he didn't know why historic preservation isn't more active in this community. And uh, Commissioner Jose uh, spoke about trying to find an opportunity for uh, the new council to consider the Edwards House, which he felt was an important consideration in the last election. And so my question is, uh, is it likely that the new council would have any possible participation in decisions about the Edwards House? My understanding is things are moving very rapidly uh, toward uh, the house not being available for preservation, and I wondered if uh, the mayor or manager could clarify that situation. I can tell you what I do know, but what I do know is that uh, approximately April 7th, uh, uh, the private citizen who was interested in having the home relocated to 743 Maple Avenue uh, uh, accepted the path of going forward with uh, the loan uh, option that had been approved by the village council prior um, and there were some discussions about uh, then going into the actual process of uh, making the arrangements necessary to move the home to 743 Maple Avenue um, I as, early, as recently as today understand that uh, the developers timeline is that whatever would have to happen would have to happen by May 15th and my understanding further is that the individuals involved in potentially moving or relocating the home to 743 Maple do not believe it is physically possible uh, to do that by that time frame. So therefore, currently it's highly unlikely that unless the deadline is moved beyond May 15th or there is a temporary storage location identified for the home, uh, that saving it will not be possible. Well, that brings me to the issue that I really and prepared to discuss uh, earlier in the day I sent to the commissioners and staff uh, a search of Google on the topic of uh, waiting periods for demolition permits and uh, as you see from that email there are many communities that have adopted this principle uh, here in Illinois as well as elsewhere and um, the principle is basically that for certain classes of um, structures, a uh, waiting period is appropriate and uh, the director of development would decide on which uh, structures meet the qualifications for a waiting period. And uh, as I say, many communities have found it useful particularly as an aid to their historic preservation act efforts to enact a waiting period for certain classes of demolition permits. And uh, these examples have been furnished by email. The next uh, slide, please. And I believe that the village council members who will take office May 5th uh, should have, as uh, Commissioner Jose suggested, a role in and the possible preservation of the Edwards House, but my feeling is that the only way that that can happen is if the current council uh, makes it happen and makes it possible by immediately enacting an emergency measure, which would be a waiting period for demolition permits on buildings that are over 100 years old. The exact 
criteria and the period of waiting uh, would be worked out by the staff, but I think you would have to at this meeting uh, consider that a policy directive to the staff to consider such a thing. Uh, that's why I'm bringing it to you at this time. Uh, next slide, please. And in particular, I'm requesting that you consider holding an emergency special meeting on April 28th, next Tuesday, to consider and approve such an ordinance that would amend the Article 3 in Chapter 7 of the Municipal Code. It's not part of the... Uh, zoning ordinance or any other, it's an administrative procedure and therefore I believe that you probably have uh, the ability to act on it on an emergency basis if that is your will. And I thank you for your prompt consideration of this important issue. If you have any questions, I'd be glad to answer them, but I hope you'll take this issue up before you adjourn today. Thank you, Dr. Goodman. I, there are lots of questions. I don't know if we're going to be able to resolve them tonight. Well, uh, the I'm question not, is I'm not... not sure the process would be it. We don't have any of that information available. Uh, I don't know if we'll be able to address that. Tonight. This is something that certainly needs to be staffed, and what I'm looking for from you tonight is some direction to the staff that this is worth looking at, and it would be of interest to the council to have a report on it. We'll take it under consideration. Thank, Thank you. For your comments. Other questions or comments from members of the audience? Hearing none, that brings us to item 13, which is reserved for council member new business. Do any members of the village council have any other business they would like to raise with the rest of the commission by that? It's, it's not really new business, it's, uh, but it seems like the most appropriate place in our agenda to touch on it. I just wanted to ask. Uh, Kind of some open-ended questions, I suppose, for anybody up here, anybody on staff, anybody watching. Um, and it's going to take off right where Gordon left off, or pick up right where Gordon left off. I'm trying to figure out what happened here. Um, 1.30 today, 1.25 today, we got notice that the uh, folks intending to move the house didn't think they had time um, to get it done. And it may be. Um, but what's a little mind-boggling is the, the whole community, residents, staff, uh, and this council put in an enormous amount of work for six months. And, and when I say work, it's, it is work. It's discussions, debate, ideas. It's uh, creativity and innovation attempts and partnership attempts. But the bottom line is, in December 9th of 2014, Mike Bain stood here and told us that he'd done eight weeks of due diligence pretty much had this sorted out. Um, we heard numerous times between then and the March meeting where this deal was approved that these details were worked out, that the found were specific comments about the foundation being understood and engineered. Um, I can't pinpoint the point in meetings, but I know that I heard Mr. Soson from the developer, I know I heard Dave. Um, numerous times, the end of April, the end of April, has been the target deadline for the developer since this conversation began. And April hasn't changed. April stays in the same spot in the calendar. So uh, if anybody's got any insight or watch at home and they want to share some with us, I'm trying to figure out how we got to the point where we had a you know, creative deal worked out on March the 3rd, and on April 8th at 9 o'clock in the morning, it's accepted 35 days later, five weeks later, and then within one week, all of a sudden, we don't have time to get this figured out. It's just, it's really disappointing. I mean, I think everybody, everybody that I know, this council, this staff, residents, neighbors, friends, was hoping to find a way to save this house. And all these people put in a ton of work, um, and here we sit with probably the house getting knocked down. So, I, I, you know, I'd say, Mayor, there's no particular business or action item here except to say that if anybody's got any insight, I'd love to hear it because one thing you can do when you have a bad situation is learn from it. And this thing has been a bad situation from the start and apparently now probably to finish. 
And so if we can learn about how it got off the rails and how after the, you know, probably thousands, if you add up all the individuals, private and public, involved hours of effort, um, we got to the point where we're probably going to knock this house down. Uh, I'd love to hear it, and I'd, I'd just encourage everybody to personally, at least from an official Village of Dollars Globe standpoint, reflect back a little bit and see if they can think of anything where, you know, we could have done something different um, or adjusted the outcome. Because this, this is a shame. It's a damn shame. Um, and it's not for lack of effort on anybody's part. So it's, uh, I'm just disappointed. It was, it was a rotten way to stay on our afternoon to pick up. Uh, thanks, and clearly, uh, once you learn from any process, uh, this was not something that had ever, my recollection, or ever really happened in this community, and every time something like this happens, it happens in a different, very different way. Um, I, I don't think it's a question of trying to explain anything. A lot of people did put a lot of time into it, no question about it. Um, not quite ready to call a game, um, so I wouldn't speak in the past tense quest just yet. Uh, as long as it's still there, there's still an opportunity. Uh, but the uh, question was asked, what's the current status? Um, we got the same information I did at the same time. It was this afternoon. So there's a bunch of things to process and to consider, but I wouldn't call it over yet. I, I, I refuse to do that. Well, well that sir. was kind of my question going to be to Mr. Goodman or maybe just a comment that I don't know if Mr. Tillotson is out what holding off the demolition permit. I'm not saying that th that's a poor idea. I'm just saying I don't know if there's other solutions to the problem. And well, I, I don't think we can really discuss here what, what is going on because there's a lot of parties that are not in this room right now. Uh, the developer's not here. Mr. Tillotson's not here. There's other not-for-profit organizations that are not here. The only part that's in this room is us. So I, I don't know if we should speculate. We just got some information today. I respond to a question that was put to me by what's the status. That's the current status. The status could change again tomorrow. I don't know, but we've got to work on it. But regardless of what the outcome is, obviously we need to figure out uh, should this, uh, I don't know, I think this exact situation will ever present itself in exactly the same way. But the similar situation should present itself. Is there a better way to be more effective about it? Sure, we'll learn from it. But Let's, uh, learn, let's learn what from, what from, from what has happened so far and see if we still make something good out of it. Yes, I could not answer the uh, I mean, I think commissioner's the question. Uh, I would recommend that she uh, put the question uh, to uh, the manager, and uh, I'm sure he's the closest to this situation of anyone in the room. Uh, uh, my understanding of my conversations with Mr. Tillerson is different than the way you uh, put it. Uh, but I say, I, I'm not Mr. Tillerson and I can't answer for him. But um, the person who's closest to the situation, I believe, is uh, Manager Fried uh, Fieldman. I don't know if I go that far. <laughs> I think he's been an intermediary with a lot of other people serving in a very important role, but I don't know if it's, uh, I, I wouldn't suggest this is on his shoulders in any way, shape, or form. Uh, I think it's on the community's shoulders. I'll agree with you on that, Commissioner Barnett. Any other new business or non-new business anyone wants to bring up? Here, hearing that. Oh, we have uh, belated public comment. Yes, yeah, it is belated. Is this not loud? Uh, you know what, sure. Please. Yes, sure. Please. Thank you, I appreciate it. My name is Jimmy Murphy. I'm at 5643 Hillcrest Road. Um, two questions. While some parties may not be here to address or answer some of the confusion or questions happening now about the current status of the house, a whole community is working toward understanding. I did write an email to everyone sitting in dais and to the village attorney and to the village manager. Two people responded to the questions. I don't think the questions were so outlandish because not only have I been asking them for quite a while, but I know many in my community, in my neighbor have, neighborhood have been asking them. I too live in a very old home. It's from 1926. I love this community. I love the older homes. I love what we do when we come together, try to save what we have. But since you're all here, can anyone answer some of the questions that I asked in the email specific regarding the loan? how much the move is exactly, and if you have it in writing, and how much is being asked above the amount that's being asked to move the house. 
I was a little bit concerned about how taxpayer monies were being used in this situation. Frankly, all things considered, hearing this conversation now, hearing Mr. Goodman and others, I'm very confused as to what the status is of this community project, this community passion, and all the time, staff, resources that have been put into it. It seems very unlikely to me right now, standing here, that no one knows what's happening. So to the two people who answered my email and provided some contacts, contacts and answers, thank you, I appreciate it. But for the rest who are watching this proceedings right now and for the rest that are wondering what's actually happening, where can we go to get more updated information as it happens as opposed to last minute questions that frankly adds a lot of confusion to understanding this Edwards House situation. Well, Ms. Murphy, let's see if I can answer your question on that point. Number one, again, this is not a village project. So this is well, very, taxpayer well, monies are being used for that matter. purpose. Nothing is being used right now. There is no but money. it's been approved, correct? It's a private use on private land for a private family, and it's I'm taxpayer dollars. Well, I just want to be clear. I want to be sure that we understand so I can hear your answer correctly. Okay. Could you? What was the question again? Mayor Tully, I'm asking very specifically. You're asking where information could be found? The $123,000 that was approved. It was approved, correct? Unanimously approved, yes. Okay. And that was for the cost of the move solely? It was a set amount. It was, does it, we understand, yes, it was to defer the cost. I'm not sure it's all the cost of the move, but it was designed to uh, mitigate the cost of moving the home, not renovating it and all the other things that would go into it. Well, I'm not talking about renovating it because it's right. taxpayer dollars for a private use private land, private family, so that would maybe not be as appropriate. So you and I are working on the same basis of that. The question to you is I actually don't agree with your characterization, but go ahead. Well, please enlighten me. Well, ma'am, the question I have for you is, uh, you asked me a question. The question was, where do people come to find more information about this problem? Well, I asked a bunch of questions in the email that I sent you last week of which you didn't respond. Okay. I'd be happy to talk with you after the meeting. But <laughs> No, I would like to hear your thoughts on that. Please enlighten me if you feel that I'm misled or confused. I didn't say I, you're misled. I didn't say you're confused. You asked me one question, which is where can the community find more information about this project? Was that a question? It can be a question. That's a good one. Thank you. Um, I was trying to answer that one. This is not a village project. So in the sense that it's not following the normal course, where it was something we were involved in, there would be all kinds of information, like Clyde Estates, for example, where we have numerous public meetings, information is generated. This is not a Clyde Estates project. This has always been, for the most part, a private proposal that would be facilitated necessarily by the village. But the main stakeholders in this have always been the owner of the property right now, the owner of the Edwards House, the yes, developer. Yes, I understand that, yes. The developer. The individuals in the community who have uh, stepped forward to try to save it by offering their own dollars and their own land to move it. And then other not-for-profit organizations that may be involved in the, in the process. When something has been put to us as a proposal, then you've had information available for the community. The actual agreement that would have to be in place for the concept to go forward hasn't even been submitted to the village. So the information that would be available to anyone interested in this topic would be the meetings that we've held where people have come up and asked questions, where information has been presented by staff. That's all, that's all there is. So, so did you just say outside of these chambers, we don't know about them until they're brought to us. I'm sorry to interrupt you, but did you just say the agreement has not been put forth to the council? That's correct. The four-party or three-party agreement that would be necessary for this to happen has not been put forth to the council for consideration or a vote. The only thing that was approved was the concept of including a uh, interest-free loan for 10 years for a set amount. I believe it was 123,000, approximately. The uh, council approved that unanimously uh, to to go forward as part of a four-party or three-party agreement. I forget how many parties there were. Uh, should that happen? But it, that hasn't even come back yet. So there's been no agreement put to the council, but yet an agreement has been accepted? No. So everything is more or less in a state of limbo at this point? That's the way it's been for some time. For some time, I agree. Yeah, because because it, things have changed. Dates have changed. Right. It was I've been following the, the meetings and the minutes on the village website because that's the most comprehensive place to understand what's happening on the dais. And actually, to get it in writing, because I don't have time to watch YouTube videos most of the day, but. That is actually some clarification that I appreciate. Um, so moving forward, is it just best to stay tuned in the following week to determine if something should yeah, happen yes, next week or not? Literally, there were information that came to us this afternoon. So we've all had about four or five hours to process it. Um, that, that's all we know at this point in time. 
So if there's going to be other efforts to try to change the deadline, to find a temporary location for the house, I don't know that yet because I don't know that yet. All I'm suggesting is that those things haven't been ruled out. Thank you. I very much appreciate the time that you've taken sure. at this meeting to answer some of those questions. Sure. Thank you. Yeah, and, and the loan was, again, just to answer your, to your question about your email, the loan, of course, was something that was put forward by this council and unanim unanimously approved by this council as a way to try to facilitate the project if it was going forward because the person that was suggesting I want to do this said I can't do it unless I have some kind of assistance. <coughs> so they couldn't come forward with a more concrete proposal without knowing that assistance would be in place. So the council voted unanimously to put the loan, the 10-year interest-free loan, out there on the table so it would be available as part of an agreement that would be put together. But it hasn't gotten to that step yet because, there, as I understand it, there are other moving parts. Um, once it would come before us for consideration of vote, then clearly we would have the full agreement, we would have the people who were involved in it, there would be the typical discussion and, and vote like we do with anything else. We just haven't progressed to that point yet. But remember, the dollars that we're talking about are actually uh, building permit fees for the new condominiums, um, the yes. Ma Mar Maple and the Marquee, which instead of coming to the village would be essentially instead applied to help offset the cost of the move. The idea being, can we get both the condos and save the house from this basically the same pot of money? And the council thought, well, well we can take those fees and 123,000 of them can be um, loaned rather than given on an interest rate basis for 10 years as part and support of this project, but there are many other pieces of the project. And you're right, there's a lot of moving parts, a lot of things have changed. I don't think that's an issue of anyone being confused or misunderstanding. It's just been the nature of this whole process. I, I just very much would have liked to have seen an estimate in writing submitted to council of the actual moving costs. Yeah. I, I, I mean, 123000 I believe we have that. In, this, in the grand scheme of things, all things considered, and we will look at our first quarter report tonight of the budget, may not seem much, but I would like to be very certain of that $123,000 and how that's taxpayer money. And I understand what you just said, but essentially it's taxpayer money. And do you have that estimate in writing at the village of the moving cost? The, there, have been some, there have been some estimates have been submitted, I believe, along the course of this time into what the overall this has. Since the part. email that I wrote, I think, was it last no, Tuesday or no, two Tuesdays ago? I believe they go back some time. Oh, I was unaware of that. Is that also a matter of public record? If we have it, then by definition, it's public record. Fabulous. Thank you very much. I appreciate yeah, the information. If I could take it off, I'd be happy to share it with you. Um, if you're able to, I would greatly appreciate that. Sure. If not, I'm happy to go back to the village and ask for it. Sure. We can simplify that for you. I'm sure Fantastic. Find, I'm sure I can find it for you. Thank you for your time, Mayor. Thank you for your comments. Other questions? Wait, wait, I'm sorry. <laughs> We're done with the questions and comments of general nature. Any more? Any new business? I want to extend that conversation just a minute. Sure. Why not? Why not? Um, it, it's a, uh, I think that something that I would appreciate that would be helpful maybe to our residents. Martin, you, you highlighted some technical aspects of this that are, to be sure, accurate um, about council actions and official things coming to us. Um, that said, because this did involve a couple of private parties, a lot of, act, a lot of the activities, so to speak, um, were off days. And so what might be helpful, I think we should just do it because I think there's a lot of people interested in it, would be to establish a little bit of a, probably wouldn't take our team a lot of time, but establish a little bit of a timeline of the various actions that occurred that weren't council day as actions. So you have, you know, you have a March 3rd meeting where there was an action to approve a 7-0 thing. Well, what happened then? Well, we had a, you know, April 8th phone call. We had an April 13th meeting. We had an April... 21st email, right. um, and then I suspect there's some other things prior to March 3rd, well, certainly and, not. and some of that stuff might just help everybody understand, you know, what did transpire, because if you were coming in and out of council meetings, you'd feel like you had no idea where this thing really was coming from or going to. Right, and it stretches back even further than that. There was a period, of course, of time when there was inactivity mm -hmm. uh, directed by this council. Uh, but to my point is this, I, I don't want this to devolve into who's responsible for anything. And I, I, I bristle at that thought. I, first of all, still think we ought to look at other solutions that can still be had. That's the most important thing. Um, can we learn from the process? You betcha. So we'll see. But in the meantime, I'll see if I can dig that up for you, Ms. Murphy. Thank you. You're welcome. Hearing no other new business from members of the Village Council, I have a motion to adjourn. So I'm moving. Second. Roll call, please. Commissioner Newstead? Aye. Commissioner Olson? Aye. Commissioner Jose? Aye. Commissioner Rankin? Aye. Commissioner Barnett? Aye. Mayor Tully? Aye. 